So I remember, I remember texting Toby when I first got the message from Lewis, and I was like, Toby, oh my fucking God. I was like, Toby, what, what do I say? What do I do? And Toby's like, what do you want? And I went, I don't fucking know. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say or do. And like, I remember just being like so nervous about that. <laughs> and then obviously put the song out uh, in like, what was it? Like, I think April or May of that year. And then I actually met the guys in November at Minecon in Vegas. Um, and bear in mind, I'd only just turned 21. So it was the perfect time for me to go to Vegas. Um, but yeah, I, I met them for the first time at that event. And they had their own separate boardroom. Um, they had their own separate boardroom at this place. Um, and yeah, I remember walking in. And when I did, uh, <laughs> I just remember Simon standing up and going, oh no, Simon stood up and went, oh no, Simon sat there and he went, what the fuck? And then, like, he stared at me, and then he walked over to me, and then, like, basically just gave me a massive Stream hug. Always use more subscribers. And then as he was hugging me, he was, like, basically shaking me left and right, going, Hello, everybody! I was like, oh, right, okay, this is where we're at. Um, and then, yeah, and then that's sort of, like, that's sort of just how it went. So there you go, so that's how that went. Um, and then, obviously, when we were at that Minecon, that's when they said, like, oh, actually, uh, in a couple months from now, because this was in November, right? So... I think they were saying that like in January or Feb, they were moving into new offices in Bristol and they were like, oh, you should definitely come down sometime, this, that and the other. They hadn't made any offers for me to be there at that point. Um, so we got back from Minecon, fast forward a few months, they've moved into their offices and then they poked me saying like, oh, have you got any more songs you'd want to do? And I said, uh, uh, not sure. Okay. And then I was like, okay, let me just try and write a song. And I remember I got really bad writer's block on Screw in the Nether. I can't remember what it was specifically. I think I even asked uh, Terps and Lewis for their, like, input on the song as well. Um, and they, from what I can remember, they didn't really want to do anything on it until it was a done song and they would rework stuff. So I remember bashing my head against the wall for, like, three weeks trying to, like, make the song work properly. And eventually I got something semi-decent down sent it over to them and then it was at that point that they then rewrote parts of simon and lewis's verses um to better fit like the way they say words or just have content that they wanted to have in like so you know like the pull up a chair have a cold beer that was a lewis line that wasn't a me line so then we did that which was really cool and then um the when i went there to use more subscribers i think what was it what was it because when did screw the nether actually come out um screw the nether um, but yeah, so basically when it came to Screw the Nether, I finally finished it in March, sent it over to them uh, early April. They did some reworks and then they invited me down to their offices in July, I think it was, because at that point I was finishing university. And when I went down there in July and recorded the song with them, that's when they said, oh, hey, we've got this spare room at the end of the office. Would you like to join us? And I was Stream like, could always use more wow. Subscribers. Okay. I was like, that's a massive offer. Like, because at this point, Yogscast was still literally number one in the world. Like they were... Number one on YouTube, like, in terms of gaming Stream at the very least. Stream always use more subscribers. But I think for a period, they were, like, number one on the whole of YouTube or something like that. But the problem was, was that at that point, I was... Obviously, I'd done radio during my student days. I think I'd been doing a, uh, a radio gig for, I think, about six months at that point. Um, I was doing a... Uh, you know, the show After Drive Time. So basically, like, I think drive time normally finishes at what, like, uh, seven, I think it was. So I was doing the late show, uh, seven till nine on a local radio station. Um, and that was my gig. And I'd done a few bits on Capital FM and things like that. So yeah, so I was very much so invested in radio. I loved it. I was really passionate about it. But then YouTube was making me so much more money. And I was sort of like umming and ahhing. And I kid you not, I went to see them for that weekend. So I went there on the, I went there on Friday, I think, and came back on Sunday. Um, when I went in to do my gig on Monday at the radio station, they were like, yeah, so the station's really struggling. We're going to have to let you go. And it just basically made the decision for me. <laughs> like, I was literally like, right, okay, so I don't have radio. Um, I just have YouTube now. And I've been offered a position at this office in Bristol. And we just went straight for it. Like, it's it just sort of happened. I think I probably would have gone for the YouTube thing anyway like i was very passionate about it like i wasn't putting my all into that radio station when i was there um like i was doing my job and i was doing it well but like between songs when they were playing i was like managing my youtube and like in my video manager and stuff like that like constantly um but yeah the stars like you said the stars kind of just aligned and it went from there